Hi, I'm Bob with LPS Computer. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on either installing or replacing a Jet Direct card for Ethernet on Design Jets. Now, this is a Design Jet 800 postscript, but what I'm going to show you is pretty much universal. It works with uh, all of the plotters, with a possible exception or two of some very early models. Um, this is the Ethernet card for design jets or for laser printers, whatever. And um, what I'm going to show you, though, applies to <coughs> the design jets. So what we're going to do is replace uh, the Jet Direct card in this machine, and then I'm going to show you how to configure it. There's two ways to do it. One is standing in front of the machine pushing buttons, and the other way is from the keyboard. From the keyboard, in my opinion, is much easier uh, it is also not machine specific, uh, so you can use it on any of the design jet 500, 800s, the T and Z series, uh, all of them except some very early models. So for the bulk of the machines, uh, this will be how you configure uh, a design jet to go on the network, either a new installation or a replacement of, um, of the Ethernet card, the Jet Direct card. So first we're going to remove the um, card from this machine. I'm going to uh, remove the power cord to power this machine down. Uh, the electronics module is where the Ethernet card lives, and that's in here. And I can push in slightly on this embossed arrow. You can swing this out, and that'll open everything up for you. This is an Ethernet cable, and of course, it's plugged into an Ethernet card. This particular card is a um, 610N, very common card, good piece of equipment. But we're going to be replacing it with a 620N, a newer card. Uh, the differences between the cards are pretty subtle. This one has slightly higher security to make the uh, military happy. Most people aren't concerned with that sort of thing. And that just fits in there like that. Now you normally just tighten these thumb screws so it doesn't come out on its own. And we're going to reinstall the Ethernet cable and power it back up. And when the machine gets ready, um, I'll show you the next step. Okay, the printer is ready, and what we're going to do is scroll down to the Setup menu, which is the printer icon, and hit Enter. And go to I.O. Setup, hit Enter. And the first thing we want to do is to reset the card. Uh, if you get a new card, you don't know what the IP address is. Uh, if we reset it to factory, then we have a known place um, to, um, to start. So we're going to go to card setup, then to advanced, and enter, and then reset the card. And that's going to cause the machine uh, to restart. So while it's doing that, we can go look at the computer, and I'll show you what we're going to Well, there's one more thing we need to do here first. The machine does need to restart, and then we have to go back into that setup menu. Okay, the card's been reset, so the next thing we need to do is go back into the setup menu, IO setup, hit enter. We need the card ID now. We need to see what it's been reset to. And this we're going to record uh, because this information has to go into the computer. Well, it'll be in the computer briefly, but the main number we need here is the IP address, 192.168.2.101. That's going to allow us to access the printer. Now we'll hit back at this point. I'm going to go to card setup. And configuration, it's going to ask us if we want to configure. Yes, we do. We have to hit enter, up, enter. So now the printer is expecting some changes to be made. And now we'll go to the computer and uh, finish the rest of this uh, 
configuration. Okay, the rest of this uh, IP configuration is done from the computer. First thing we got to do is set up communications <coughs> with the printer. Now I'm assuming that you've been plugged in the uh, other end of your Ethernet card into a hub or whatever device you're using to connect to your network because it won't communicate by magic. Okay, I'm using Chrome here because we use Chrome and the IP address that we got out of there I'm going to put into the address bar of the uh, the browser. That was 192.168.2.1 and hit enter. Okay, that opens up a website inside the printer. You have two tabs, home and networking. We're going to choose networking and that brings up all of the information that's uh, in the printer that we just saw on the front of the print printer panel. Now sometimes you'll get a question here that says do you want to share your information with HP, yes or no. Um, if you want to share it that's fine, if not that's fine too. You have to click that and then it'll bring up this page. So let's suppose we wanted to change the IP address to something more similar to um, the, the, uh, the web address of our computer. That'll be sure, make it sure that everything matches up and it's going to communicate well. So let's, uh, let's say there's already a, a, another printer on address 192.168.2.101. We want to change this to 10. So let's get rid of that one and we'll go with that. And if the subnet mask is already set at 255.255.0, very common. Most of the time that's what you're going to see. Default gateway happens to already be set for uh, the default gateway we have with our own network. We just saw that when we did the uh, IP config. So that remains unchanged. But any of these can be changed to whatever they need to be to make the uh, make it compatible with your network. Now we need to set this to manual up here. We've got a number of options, but it needs to be set to manual. And you need to double check with the printer and make sure it hasn't timed out. We set that to uh, accept manual changes a little while ago. So before we go any further, we want to make sure that that is still the case. We'll take a quick look. Actually, it has timed out. Fix it. And then I'll hit apply. Okay, we'll click apply and that's going to change it. Okay, this says it uh, made the changes okay. Now, this address is what we typed in, but that's no longer the IP address of the printer. So we are not communicating with it anymore. We have to change this to match what we just put in if we're going to communicate with the printer. So I'm going to change that 101 to a 10 and hit enter and that should bring up the website again with the networking and now you can see this this is information retrieved from the printer not what I just typed in and you can see it is what I typed in so the changes have been made this is uh, th this uh, jet direct card is now ready or you're, you're if, if you're doing a T or Z series you'll see the same kind of a thing and your formatter uh, is now configured to communicate uh, over Ethernet. Now if you're doing a, a new installation, you're going to want to close out of this. Let's just leave it open for now. We want to go to um, devices and printers. And I don't see an 800 on here. So we will click new, add a printer. And this is going to be a network printer. And it's not listed. And I'm not going to wait, so we'll click it on that. And we'll say add a printer using TCP address, IP address, or host name next. Okay, so we're going to 
make it a TCP IP uh, um, device and type in the address which was 192.168.2.10 and next Okay, so it found the printer, but it doesn't know what it is. So we have to tell it that this is an HP. And I'm going to go down to Design Jets here. This is an 800 Postscript 24 inch. Click on that and next. There's already a driver in this computer uh, for this printer. If it isn't, then it would ask you to browse to where it is. Um, to do that, you would first have to go to hp.com, go to the bottom of their page where it says downloads and uh, answer the questions. It's asking you and it'll bring up a page of, of printer drivers. You would download that to a specific folder on your computer I usually just put it on, uh, open it, or make a new folder on the desktop so I can find it easily and then put everything in there. Now you have to unzip it before you go any further. But when it asks you if you have the disk, you'd say yes and then browse to that folder and uh, just double click on it and it would load it. So we're going to use the driver that's currently installed here. And it's telling me that's a Design Jet 800 Postscript, 24 inch. And so now it's. Uh, installing it you can uh, put in a location here we can share the printer or not if uh, this is a standalone installation where you only have one computer attached to it you, it, it doesn't matter if you share it or not uh, if there's more than one person printing to this printer you're going to want to share it and you can give it a share name in this case it's just going to use the driver name and next and print a test page And so now the printer is going to print a test page to prove that it's actually connected. Well, I hope that's taken some of the mystery out of how to put a printer on a network for you. And uh, if you do need a Jet Direct card or um, you want to configure it by pushing the buttons on the front of the machine. All of that stuff is, has detailed instructions on our blog uh, at lpscomputer.com. Uh, it's totally up to you. You can do it either way. Either way is fine. I prefer this way myself. Um, I think that's about it for today. We do have a very good supply of Jet Direct cards and uh, even formatters for the TNZ series. So whatever you need, um, we've pretty much got it for these uh, older printers. You can reach us at 800-959-1575. We'll help you any way that we possibly can. You have a great day now. Bye-bye.